please give it up for Dan Soder, everybody. Barry Williamsburgy, all right. Perfect temperature. It's the closest I'll ever get to playing in a band at a fucking house party in my entire life. This is fun. What a little adorable Thunderdome you guys have here. It's fun fucking declining down those steps thinking I was gonna die to possibly bomb in a basement. That's what I like. I'm like, you know what? I want the chance of bomb, but don't let me leave easy. <laughs> if I fail, I really want to sit in it. You just go, excuse me, sorry, excuse me. No, excuse me, sorry. Uh, did you guys have fun during that blizzard? Oh boy, guess who got high and watched people fall down outside his apartment? What? Slippery Street, that 31st Street in Queens. Um... The worst part of the blizzard is it's not when it's blizzard ding the ding. It's uh like the two it's like the days afterwards all just everything just turns to shit muck and just then you get in a cab thinking you've es escaped the elements and then you realize you're standing in a fucking puddle in the cab. Yesterday I was like Shh, what the fuck is this? I found a cell phone in the cab I was in last night. Has that ever happened to anybody? It is fucking weird finding someone else's phone. Because you're like, this is someone else's life. It's ringing. I don't know who Dawn is. Should I steal this phone? <laughs> is it an upgrade? No, it's an Android. This guy's, how, this guy's having tough enough go as it is. Probably give his phone back. <laughs> I picked up the phone and I was like, hey, if you want your cell phone, it's going to be at the front desk of the Warwick Hotel. And then I went and I dropped it off because that's... I was thinking that's what a good person does, but I forget how creepily deep my voice is. <laughs> so who was ever on the other end of that phone, all they heard was, if you watch your cell phone, it would be at the floor of the door. <laughs> Come along. Some no fucking cops. <laughs> Give me back my phone! <laughs> That's a Mel Gibson ransom quote. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's good to be in Williamsburg. My one question about Williamsburg is, hundreds of years from now, what will hipster ghosts be like? <laughs> Instead of going, boo, they're gonna go, ah, I used to live here away before you did. <laughs> I'm from Denver, Colorado, originally, and uh, weed is now legal there for recreational consumption. No. I hate it. It sucks. You just gotta understand, all of my stoner burnout friends that were just supposed to disappear now run and operate dispensaries in Denver. They're like fucking weed sommeliers. That's what they do now. And they're dicks about it. They're like, what do you get in New York? Do you get like a low-grade sativa? <laughs> Fuck you, Dennis. <laughs> you live in your mom's basement, all right? <laughs> Fucking sommelier for weed? Fuck regular sommeliers. It's, I don't like regular sommeliers. That, that bossy, like, you should try an Old World 69 Merlot with a decent cut of beef. Is that what I should do, you fancy alcoholic? <laughs> Why don't you stop swirling that glass and call your kids? Because <laughs> they miss you, you purple-teethed wino. Why don't you tell some more lies? <laughs> and then fall asleep on the couch. Is that my mom? I don't know. I don't know where it went. Uh, getting high, I still get high a lot as an adult, and it's not as, half as fun. That's why they started calling it medicinal. Because <laughs> older potheads were like, I need this. Okay? Well, I can need this shit. It's medicine. <laughs> When I was like fucking 23 and I moved to New York, I'd fuck go outside drunk 
rip a joint, like, fuck society and its rules, yeah. Now, I just wait till late at night and I put on sweatpants. <laughs> and then I just get worried. <laughs> I'm like, am I ever gonna pay off these loans? Why did I major in journalism? <laughs> As it's not, you can't even fucking relax when you're high anymore because everyone's all up in your shit. You can't. There's no privacy. We have all this great technology. You can't have fun with it. Want to watch Netflix? Have a fucking panic attack? That's what Netflix is to me. I turn it on and I'm like, well, here we go. Here comes the down spiral. Because you would think Netflix, on paper, Netflix, it, it just works. It's like communism. You're like, yeah, everyone should do that. That fucking looks <laughs> awesome. But then, with the real Netflix, in practice, is your friends losing their shit when they find out you don't watch the same television shows as them. Like, you don't watch Dexter? What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know. Why are you giving me friend homework? I watched The Wire, not because I wanted to. Well, because I had to, to save six friendships. Turns out I liked it a lot. I, uh, my friends are having kids, which uh, is ruining a lot of my friendships. It is. Uh, mostly just because the, um, the new version of children is, uh, they're terrifying. More so than ever in history. Children now are way scarier because they're so awesome with technology and still terrible socially. <laughs> you ever seen a three-year-old on an iPad? It's crazy. <laughs> they're just like, boop, 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 boop. And then they look at you and they're like, oh, <laughs> Don't you Kaiser Soze me. I just watched you do a bank transaction. <laughs> Put the money overseas. I want to go up, up. <laughs> Fuck you! Not that dumb! I know how smart you are! Just shaking my friend's kid and letting her... I know how smart you are! <laughs> Truth be told, I don't trust anyone under the age of, uh, 19. If you, you know, like, um... It's not because of the knockout game. <laughs> You guys still terrified about that? You guys all still riled up, worried about the knockout game? Which is the media just scaring rural white people? That's what they love to do. The news loves to scare, yeah, but the knockout game, turns out it was like two people. But everyone's like, oh my God, look out. But it's funny when my friend, like I have a friend that tries to get too liberal about shit. And he, he told me, he's like, dude, ever since the knockout game, I have been tensing up around groups of black teenagers. What fantasy world did you live in when you weren't tensing up around groups of black teenagers? I'm terrified of all teenagers. They're a scary group. They have the bodies of adults and the minds of children. So I don't fuck them or fight them. No thank you. And I don't trust them. They grew up with the internet. You can't trust anyone that grew up with the internet. You had to do most of your formative years without the internet for me to trust you. Because as a man, if you grew up with the internet, that means to me, you never earned a jerk. That's exactly what that means. It means that you did not work for a nut. I was the last, I'm the last bastion of, like, I got AOL in the mail. Sixth grade. So perfect timing. But earning a jerk, like kids now can just Google asshole blossom. And they'll know what that is. It used to be if you wanted to learn about that, you had to go through several red VHS tapes. I just, I'm a little bitter because earning your jerk means a lot to me. Like I used to have to fucking wait for a free weekend of HBO and then study the TV guide like I was on trial for murder and that's the loophole out of this I'd be like Bikini Island 3am that's where we'll do it that's where I'll touch my dick to a titty that's all it's about just touching your dick to a titty in motion that's all you want to do 
stay up till 3 a.m. and fight and sleep like some fucked up jerk off boot camp. <laughs> and just thinking I'm gonna see a titty and then waking up four hours later in a sleeping bag in the living room, very angry. <laughs> There's just some televangelist on a TV that's like, oh, Lord, and like, what happened? There is no God. My balls are still full. Uh, I don't, I don't, it doesn't do it for me anymore. Porn, doesn't do it. Doesn't get me off. Doesn't. I don't like it. You know what my new thing is? Now I watch emotionally moving videos on YouTube until I cry. Yeah. But I don't call it crying, because that makes it sound weak. I call it face coming. <laughs> it's an orgasm for your soul. Why don't you try it? Yeah, I could go online and watch two chicks blow a dude. I could do that and touch myself like a caveman. <laughs> or I can go online and watch two animals that are friends that shouldn't be friends. <laughs> I don't know why that sick elephant and that golden retriever get along. But my chest is tight. <laughs> I might bust a face nut. Go ahead, watch people bang it out online. Good for you, watching that simple shit. I'll be watching soldiers surprise their families. <laughs> yeah, that's not the opposing catcher. That's your dad who was in Iraq. Why don't you hug on the pitching mound? I'm gonna face come all over my keyboard. <laughs> it's always the same, too. When you jerk off to porn, at the end, it's always the same. You're just like, why did I do that? I'm so gross. Why did, but when you face come to a real, watch a kid with Down syndrome read an acceptance letter into college. <laughs> if that doesn't move you, you're a monster. You're a fucking monster. And then face come all over yourself. And then when you're done, you're like, there's some good in the world. And I'm gonna find, thank you guys so much. You guys are very really fun. Yeah.